Welcome back to Hannity. As Governor Andrew Cuomo attempts to take away the Second Amendment rights of New Yorkers, a group of state sheriffs is fighting back. Earlier this week, Sean sat down with one of them. He is Putnam County Sheriff Donald Smith, and he says these gun laws are not only unconstitutional, they would give criminals the advantage over law-abiding citizens. Watch this. And joining us now, Putnam County Sheriff Donald Smith. How are you, sir? Good, welcome Very back. Very good, Sean. Appreciate Thank you for, Thank you for all, all, all that you're doing. Um, now, you were the head of the Sheriff's, what was it, the Sheriff's Association. Yes, Sean. I'm the immediate past president, and I was the president uh, at our annual meeting in Albany in January. And you wrote Governor Cuomo a letter. Um, he doesn't apparently like guns at all. I mean, if you look at what they were really planning to do, what they discussed doing, and then restricting seven bullets and a gun, uh, pretty frightening for a lot of people watching around the country. Well, Sean, this uh, so-called New York SAFE Act is really a misnomer. It certainly doesn't make the citizens of New York any safer. In fact, quite the contrary. It makes them less safe. As you know, there's more than 330 million guns in the country right now. And the drug dealer, uh, the gang member, the felon, they'll always get a gun. This law penalizes the law-abiding citizen, the law-abiding gun owner who lawfully wants to own a gun for self-protection and to protect his family. Isn't this, though, by disarming people the way they are, what does it say to the people that have no intention ever to obey the law? They have free reign at that point, right? It was just like when they revealed the names and locations and homes of, of people that own guns in, in Westchester County, et cetera. You know, they're basically saying, all right, rob this house, don't rob this house. If you want guns, try and rob that house. Sean, you're absolutely correct. Uh, this law clearly is misguided. Uh, I know what their intentions are, but ultimately people will, will get a gun uh, that want to commit a crime. And, and, and this is clearly, Sean, a violation of the Second Amendment and the Constitution. And they want to talk about, uh, you know, deer hunting and target shooting. It has nothing to do with it. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the Constitution of the United States. It has to do with our founding document, the Declaration of Independence, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It has to do with uh, our Second Amendment and our Bill of Rights. It has to do uh, with limited government. And unfortunately, I'm also concerned that this is an incremental degradation of our rights. Doesn't it have to be incremental for this reason, and that is that if the next incident happens with a pistol, they'll say, well, we just didn't go far enough. And let's say somebody, a perpetrator, has a pistol with, you know, four or five or six pistols, they're going to be able to shoot 60, 70, 80 rounds, you know, before you know what happened. Uh, and reloading a pistol as a, as a pistol marksman, I can tell you, you can drop a clip and put one in and, and be ready to fire pretty quickly. How fast can you do it? Two and a half seconds? We have to do it in two and a half seconds. Oh. But, but, Sean, this, uh, this whole issue of, uh, of seven rounds in a magazine, Crazy. of just arbitrarily uh, removing uh, guns uh, uh, and, and long guns from our people, from our citizens, just because of uh, the fact they might have a, a, a bayonet lug or they may have a pistol grip, it makes no sense. That's and Sean, cosmetic. That's For those cosmetic. Those that don't know what they're talking about, right. And, and Sean, when you look at, uh, you look at uh, places that have very strict gun control laws like Washington, D.C. and Chicago, Chicago's you see high crime rates, huge. high murder rates, high crimes committed with uh, guns. And so it doesn't work. But you're, you're a law enforcement guy. We always hear law enforcement, they want these guns off the street. That's not true, is it? Sean, it's not true, particularly when you're talking about the elected law enforcement officials, the sheriffs. Mm -hmm. uh, we have 3,080 elected sheriffs across the country. They have a special relationship to the people that they serve. They want to keep them safe. They want to protect their families. Uh, they don't have to kowtow or answer to political, politically elected uh, executives. Just the people. Just the people. They're, and I think that says a lot, Sean. If they're accountable to the people, they know what the people want. And they also know what keep the people safe. We had, in Albany, Sean, we had 52 of the 58 sheriffs there, Republicans, Democrats, conservatives, liberals, and moderates. And we came to a consensus 
that the SAFE Act, the New York so-called SAFE Act, needed to be modified. Let me ask you the danger if, let's say, it's a home invasion, maybe two or three perpetrators, and you only have, are allowed legally to have seven bullets in your gun. Um, look, I, I've carried a gun, a pistol, more than half my adult life, uh, more than half my full life, and I'm a good shot. But under those circumstances, I'm not sure. I've never been tested. I assume I would be okay, but I've never been tested. And I'm sure every police officer or law enforcement officer wonders if, God forbid, that day comes, how will they respond, which is why you're trained so much Sean. to be prepared. Now, what if you miss the first couple? What if, what if you just wound somebody? You know, just get him, tap him in the shoulder, and, and he's still coming at you. You run out of bullets. Then what happens? Sean, why would we want to put... Uh, our citizens at a disadvantage to the criminals. As I said, the criminals will, they're not gonna, they're not gonna follow the law. They're not gonna put seven rounds in their magazine. No. They're not gonna uh, not use an assault weapon. The, the point is, you know, this is really a, a fundamental right, the right to protect yourself, to protect your family. And here's another thing, law enforcement many times takes minutes you know, a trooper, a deputy sheriff, or a police officer it may take minutes to get there. Maybe when longer. seconds when seconds Absolutely. count it, and lives can will, be lost. Whatever it is, will be over by the time they get there. Chances are that that is correct. Right, and Joe Biden says, "Well, just just aim the shotgun and fire it through the door." That's what, that was his advice. Now, I have shotguns and I have an AR-15. Um, some shotguns have quite a bit of kick. What are the chances are that maybe a woman home alone picking up a shotgun is going to fall back, having never shot it before, or is not used, used to using a firearm? Which weapon would you recommend? Sean, I would recommend a weapon with a 223 caliber that really gives very little kick. And AR where properly is, trained, properly trained. There's no kick. There's no, very little kick very at little. all. Very little, Sean. Yeah. And uh, I, I would recommend that we not give an advantage to the criminals. I recommend we protect our citizens and we not take away their Second Amendment rights. All right, Sheriff. Good to see you. Thanks for what you're doing. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate, uh, Thank you for what, what you're doing. Thank you very God much. God bless you, Sean. Appreciate it.